you're not going to do a full 32 channel mix from scratch in your video editor, at least I wouldn't. Hi, I'm John Tendy, and welcome to the fifth and final segment of this series. Final Cut Pro X has very limited audio features, so don't even attempt to do a mix in Final Cut Pro. All that clicking and dragging, it's a tendonitis wonderland. And even Premiere Pro, while the audio mixer is very good, they offer a separate, more advanced audio workstation option, Adobe Audition. And like I said previously in this series, if you plan on doing a 32-channel mix, a 40-channel mix in Premiere Pro, you're crazy. That's not what it's designed for. It's a video editor first. But since Premiere does have advanced audio features compared to most other video editors, you can do an 8 or 12 channel mix in Adobe Premiere comfortably without the need to open Adobe Audition or to send it out to another audio workstation via AAF. In this situation, you're still going to need to automate levels and pan at least, read, write, touch, latch, etc. So in this video, I'll show you how to set up your Personas Faderport 8 to act as a surface controller in Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, we've launched Premiere and we're gonna open up our sound effects mock-up session that we've been using through this series. This time we're gonna look at the mixer because we're setting up our Personas Faderport 8 to act as a control surface. First, let's power up the Faderport 8 to select the options necessary to make this connection. As you power up, hold down those first two select buttons on, on faders one and two, and you'll see a menu, Studio One, MCU, Huey, MIDI mode, etc. There are some setup options. Those are not necessary for now. We're gonna choose MCU because we're gonna be using the uh, Mackie control protocol. And from there, you're gonna get a choice of Logic, Cubase, Sonar, or Ableton. We're gonna choose Logic, okay? And then the next thing we do is we're gonna soft uh, soft restart with this select button here. Now, if you look at the uh, scribble strips, they're blank. And the reason why is because we have not chosen the fader port 8 as our control surface in Premiere. So let's go to that preference in Premiere Pro. Let's look at the Premiere screen. We're going to go to control surface. And first we have to choose a device class. Uh, the device class is going to be Mackie. We're using the Mackie control protocol. In other words, that is the uh, in other words, that is the language that Premiere Pro will understand as the Faderport 8 sends it automation commands and vice versa. Uh, so now that we've chosen our device class, let's double click on that and go to our settings and we're going to add a bank. In other words, the Faderport 8 is a single bank of eight faders. If it was a fader port 16, it would be two eight channel banks in one box. And that's how any control surface works. They always work in banks of eight. So we're gonna add a single bank of eight. Uh, the device type is Mackie control, we know that. And the MIDI input device, now even though there isn't a physical MIDI cable connecting the fader port eight to my Mac, the inter-application communication is MIDI. So we're gonna choose uh, the fader port eight as a MIDI input device and output device. We're using port one. There's only one eight-channel bank, so you only have one port to choose from. Okay, we'll click OK. We're going to click OK again, and let's take a look at the faders, and they pop right up. So we know that we have made a connection. Now, let's look at channels one, two, and three as I move the faders on the fader port eight. You can see that they're moving accordingly as we go down the line. Now, in this session, there are 14 channels of sound effects. So all we have to do to see those other channels is just to scroll. In fact, let me hit select so that you can see it's moving down the line. And channel 14 uh, is um, the last channel, and that's the channel that has music on it. I'm gonna solo it, hit play. So while we're there, let's take a look at that channel. Right now it's set to touch and we can choose touch, write, read, latch, etc. from the fader port 8 or we can choose it here. So let's take a look at the channel and you can see uh, right now it's on touch and now I've changed it to write. I can change it to read. Let's go to touch and let's just write some data. I'm just moving the fader randomly and let's see if it worked. I'm rewinding. And there, you can see that there is a data communication. The fader port 8 is connected, and it will act as our control surface for audio in Premiere Pro. 
The setup process is the same in Adobe Audition, and other controllers are supported with a Mackie, Yukon, or Tangent device class. The Fader Port 8 is small enough to fit on a small editing desk while still including 100mm faders, jog wheel, a complete transport with solid buttons, and it integrates quickly and easily with Adobe Premiere Pro, every major audio workstation, and of course, Persona Studio One. I hope you enjoyed this series, and if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up, please click the like button, and don't forget to check out Tendi Media on Facebook for more videos and live music performances. I'm John Tendi, thank you for watching.